come to other countries, they block us from joining their law school. Mm. Does it mean that we get lost on the way, that we cannot, we cannot become advocates since our country does not have the law to guarantee us to join the bar? When we come to Rwanda, they tell us we have to bring a reciprocity to join the law. We have some other lawyers in the house. Probably one can add on something. Sasa wewe mpewa nafasi ukupatia mwingine. I think lawyers are always lawyers. Eh? They, are, they, are, they are very witty. Okay, Thank you. proceed. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is uh, Benjamin Sixters. Actually, so sorry for what you experience anyway. The advocates and uh, Kenyan advocates in Rwanda, we have uh, Kenyan advocates who are actually practicing in Rwanda here. When they went back home, they said there's no reciprocity between Kenya and Rwanda. It's just like recently when Rwanda became so active, uh, they were uh, aware of the petition that was raised uh, around 2018. Now they uh, they also are now asking from Kenya, they need also reciprocity. There's one member of parliament with us. I think uh, he knows uh, what is going on. And the, bill, the Advocates Act has actually been a game. It, it has actually been a ping pong game in the parliament. Right now we have the bill of 20, 2021 or something. The bill has become so political and yet the, uh, the Kenyan advocates here that they were uh, sown here in Rwanda, they are allowed to actually to, to practice here. Rwanda is doing its best, but Kenyan side, there is a problem. So I'm actually appealing, even the member of parliament that is actually here, with the JLA committee back in Kenya, if they can have we can live with the bill, yes, we can also be working with the bill, but also the Rwanda Bar Association, because last year when I went there, they were requesting for memorandum of understanding. We can live lonely with the bill. Please, you can note that. The memorandum of understanding between Rwanda and Kenya, whereby you allow the Kenyan advocates practicing here, they can also practice back home. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll have two responses. One from the Honorable John Kagusha, the MP for Mukroini. And then luckily for you, your new High Commissioner is also aware by profession. So she also understands it and she'll tell us what she intends to do. The Honorable John Kagusha, the MP for Mukroini. Thank you Even very much. Buyer. Yeah, th thank you very much indeed, uh, Your Excellency. The issue of uh, students who are graduating from abroad and coming to join KSL in Kenya has been a thorn, uh, a thorn in the flesh. It's an issue that has been under legislation for some time. But now we have something that has been introduced that helps us to handle this. Uh, the students who are coming from abroad can be able to apply for the pre-bar examination. And once you have passed the pre bar examination, you can now be uh, admitted to the Kenya School of Law if you have studied law abroad. Uh, we also have the other point uh, that is important for you to note is Kenya School of Law will require you to also have the cluster points uh, for you to, to have studied law, the necessary cluster points at the Form 4 level, KCSE level, that would enable you to be able also to do this uh, uh, the, the, the pre buy exam and also get admitted. And I know that is where one of the, uh, that is actually one of the barriers that has been difficult for the students who may have gone abroad, but they did not have the cluster points. So that is one of the challenges uh, that, uh, that actually that can be handled. Then of course, the issue of uh, reciprocity, the issue of equation, of the degree abroad and their qualifications in the country, 
I think that one is, a, is, is more of a, an education policy, is a bigger issue than, that, uh, than just the issue of the law degree. It's an issue that needs to be handled at that level. It should be easier for East African countries because we also have IALA, where we can do legislation that is going to help us to have a common stand for the East African countries. But yes, anything that you think we can be able to help, if you have some ideas, uh, I'm in uh, JLAC, and so I can work with you to ensure that we fast track anything that can help you. Of course, one of the things that we also have, Your Excellency, at the moment, is also a law that has been sponsored by, I think, Honorable Lillian Gogo to decentralize or to delocalize the Kenya School of Law so that uh, we can have students taking uh, the course away from Nairobi and in other centers is one of the things that we are considering. I think also Honorable Babu Owino is also on the same. Is one of the things that we are also considering in JLAC at the moment. And in fact, we are looking at it as a, an opportunity to have many campuses across the country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Commissioner. What can you do from, in terms of MOU? Um, thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, in terms of MOU, we already have uh, quite a number of MOUs that we are processing as, as a mission, um, about 10. And I think that what, what we can, we can um, request through the uh, H, HQ, our headquarters, in the Ministry of Education is to try and come up with one that allows um, that. But as uh, MP Kagwisha said, I, I am surprised because I know that um, if you study law outside and you want to come and do uh, Kenya School of Law in Kenya, you can do your pre bars and then you have to do your pre bars and then join Kenya School of Law. So I don't think there's a, a, a bar really because you are allowed to join KSL as long as you do the pre bar exams. So, uh, but in terms of the uh, uh, students who have done law here in Rwanda who want to come and practice uh, in Kenya, we will look into it through the Ministry of Education and, and our uh, HQ. Thank you. And see whether we can come up with an additional MOU. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Leader of Majority of the National Assembly. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Excellency, I am that MP who has sponsored a bill in Parliament to have advocates in uh, Rwanda actually practice in Kenya. Um, we have walked this journey with the young people in this country. I actually call them my clients when I see them because every time they have issues here, they make frantic calls to me because of uh, the work I'm doing around this area. And um, we have had the bill go through uh, first reading. It, it, it went to the Committee on Budget. We finished. It is actually in JLAC. And uh, I, I would like to request you, uh, now that I'm here, to request, because that committee is heavily government, but we have had issues with the lawyers in the committee. And one of the issues that they raise is uh, three issues they have raised with me when I went to make a presentation. One, that uh, the Rwanda uh, law is not common law, as, that, as they weren't practicing in Kenya. So that becomes a different. So it is difficult for uh, advocates here to practice in Kenya, and vice versa. Two, they, um, they raise the issue of the, the, the equivalent of KSL here in, 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 in Rwanda, that it does not meet the standards of the KSL in Kenya. The third issue they have raised is uh, uh, that uh, uh, the law here is practiced in Kenya Rwanda, I think. You know, uh, even judgments here are written in Kenya Rwanda. Kenya is a different cup of tea. So based on those key factors, and then also the issue of market, that when we open up the Kenyan uh, market, there'll be a flood, it'll be a floodgate for many people who will come and interfere with the market. They've raised those issue, four issues. But what, what I've also done, I've tried to convince them, which I have, and I think uh, uh, we have had many, I've lobbied the Kenya, the Law Society of Kenya, and the Law Society of Kenya is in agreement that actually we can open the law, the, we can open the doors for advocates from here to come and practice. Uh, but, but what I'm trying to amend in the Advocates Act is just one sentence 
to allow the advocates here to especially uh, Rwanda, Burundi and Botswana to be able to practice in Kenya because the law allows Tanzania and Uganda in Kenya but it does not allow um, a, a Rwandese trained Kenyan lawyers and that's the interesting thing Rwandese trained Kenyan lawyers to practice in Kenya so this this my bill is actually at uh, JLAC Murungara uh, seems to our chairperson mm. uh, seems to not to be so sure because he doesn't want to offend uh, uh, colleagues in the profession so he's not been very but every time I talk to him he said oh and I'm bringing it for second reading I'm so bringing it for second you, need, you need my hand so what you need to do is call Murangara and call the lawyers at Kagushia Kagushia is here he's not saying he's one of them oh, so. <laughs> because it's a JLAC and they just need to yes, say yes when they bring it to parliament myself and uh, uh, Ichungo will push it and it will go through and these young people will actually be able so, to participate. So John Kagushia can you give a commitment that you talk to your colleagues to be more friendly and now that you are here it's good I came with the two of you because you are conversing with this matter. Your Excellency uh, you, you see we are addressing two different, different issues. Yes. Uh, we address the first one on the issue of uh, Kenyans who are studying abroad yes. and want to come and be admitted in Kenya. And of course now there's other issue of uh, lawyers who are uh, Rwandese or who are admitted here in Rwanda or Botswana and other neighboring countries. I think the only issue, and my colleague there did raise it, would be the issue of reciprocity, yeah. whereby our lawyers are actually allowed to practice in those countries, that can be done and that can be pursued basically on that reciprocity principle. And I think Honorable Bayer is doing the right thing. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, of course, uh, you, you know the way these professions sometimes mm. can be very restrictive. Yeah, they want to ring fence. You know? Yeah, so, so that really is an issue. Okay. But, but at, at a country level, yeah. that, that can be handled, okay. Your Excellency. Okay, very well. Uh, two more questions. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, How many you. more questions do we have, uh, Madam? You. All right, thank you. How many more questions can we take? Two more. Two, two, no, let's have two ladies and two guys, and then we call it a night. Th thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm Wanderi, as I said, from Odaya, and uh, <laughs> I'm happy that Your Excellency you recognize that, uh, that point, because it's so dear to me. And uh, I'll say that uh, most of us, when we are here in Rwanda or when we are in diaspora, we have a lot of commitment and we have a lot of interest back home. And that's why we said everything that we get, like someone like me, back to Odaya. Back to that, on, uh, I have three issues that I would request uh, if they could be addressed. One of, one of the issues is that, which was discussed when we had our Minister of Education, uh, Mr. Mash Mashogu, yeah. Yes, when he was here, we had an issue concerning students from Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. The university was doing very well here until it was closed. We have more than, I can say more than 500 students who are still stuck here. Uh, when that issue was released through the PS diaspora and uh, in education, the JQUAT, they only sent their team that came here only for four days and they didn't cover the issues for students. If many of them who are here, they could speak, you, you realize that people invested in education and up to now they are unable to finish because JQUAT is not addressing, it's not uh, addressing their issue. I don't know who would address that so that at least the institution which was known here and it had a good name, people should not say that this institution, the other day they put they were setting an ad there where they had. And someone started saying to us one day, these people are selling their property, so they are going away with even what we had invested. So if this issue could be addressed, it will be good. The second issue is what was listed by our, our chairman. Uh, we travel to Kenya most of the time, and some of us, we use our cars back to Kenya. And um, I don't know what can be done. We have seen here in Rwanda systems working. When the president stood there where you're studying the podium, he said, His Excellency William Ruto, he said that uh, we are going to automate most of the services in Kenya. And it has been done because most of the things we have seen, we are able to do these things. But uh, I feel also if we could automate also our roads. 
You see, here, if I have any problem, I don't deal with the policemen. I only deal with the policemen when I pay the government on my own mistakes that I have committed. So you don't deal that when you have done this, you have, you have committed this, this mistake. The system or the cameras are the ones which are doing. We have seen this being done in Thika Road, but if it can be distributed. Here in Kigari, we started with the two cameras, and we could call, and we say, oh, chairman, wameweka camera pare. But now, everywhere, even on the traffic lights, where you go, if you pass, you don't have any problem. The policeman is the one who is going to stop you on the other side after three days, and then you pay the government, so the government can get as much as eleven more, more in terms of revenue. So if this can be done in Kenya, I think we are going to get far much better, and we are also going to remove the 50 things that we are talking, if we could, uh, we could improvise and we do what Rwanda has done. Thank you. Then, uh, last, before, one. last one. Yeah, before I finalize, the last one, uh, I would say that uh, for the last, like from January, we had several cases. And uh, we, we, as you heard the chair saying, as I'm, I'm, I'm among the people who deal with a lot of issues that regards the diaspora, our excellence, your excellency, we had uh, 13 cases of Kenyans who passed on, who were affected from here. That was in Janu from January to March. And we got a lot of hardship. And uh, one of the things that we would request maybe from PS Diaspora Affairs is if the diaspora, the association that is led by our able chairman, Don Fas Mutua, if in the future we could have a budget, because every time we end up, we are the only one who comes to support these Kenyans who are in distress from our pockets. Thank you. Um, PS will answer the last one on JKU card. We'll find out from the ministry and we'll set a response through the mission exactly what happened because we are not competent to answer because we don't have the information. I'll find out from uh, CS Machogu um, or from the Vice Chancellor, that great lady there at uh, Juja, we'll find out and uh, we will definitely give a response through the mission so that uh, we know the way forward. Two, getting our roads, we are doing it. One, we want to remove the policemen from the roads to go and fight the bandits. Yeah. <laughs> they have no business being on the roads because they are the cause of the problems that we have on the roads. Yeah. In fact, we want to move the training colleges for police from Kiganjo to Kariyo Valley so that they train where the real action is. There is, no, there is no action in Keganjo. Yeah? So that Keganjo can remain a university college for police, for criminology, investigations, and specialized uh, services in the police force. But the basic training of marching, of weaponry, on basic combat skills should be where the real action is. The same with the military the training school in Eldoret. We want to move it to either Samburu or somewhere there. But this program for automating our roads and having cameras to find you, to know the, the, the fine, even if it's a day or after, is going to happen. I've seen it in Dubai. Nobody policeman bothers with you, and nobody plays around with the traffic laws. So that is something we are doing. We have already started, and we are going to perfect it, yeah, so that uh, we, we separate uh, these traffic offenses from human beings because uh, we are not able to deal with them, yeah, so, so that one is, uh, is going to happen. Uh, P.S., you want to say something? I don't know your answer, but I doubt you can be able to deal with it. Because of the problems we are having in terms of the, money. Right. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Um, but just to clarify that whenever we have requests from the missions, and the request usually will come from the embassy, that a certain, a certain uh, diasporian is stranded for a number of reasons, we constantly help. We have, from this particular mission, uh, repatriated a number of Kenyans who have been distressed. Now, it is possible that sometimes diaspora will not say that 
this person has been distressed and so on. But we're also aware that very often diaspora actually fundraise. So that we often, we know you fundraise, and we often will meet a part of that budget. Now, we have four million Kenyans in this, not all in distress, but we have four million Kenyans around the, around the world. It is not possible for the budget that we have to meet every distress case. Every day, Your Excellency, every single day since I took this job, I have a repatriation request. A person has died in the diaspora and we have to move bodies and so on. So what some of the other associations have done, that have other diaspora associations have done that have supported our work, your neighbors in Botswana, for example, is that they have taken out an insurance program as a diaspora association. And what that has done is for every bereavement, uh, um, the insurance is actually able to pay last respects and so on, so that everybody does a, a bit in carrying this burden. It is not sustainable for us to be able to repatriate every single person who dies abroad or who, has, um, who is unable to pay their bill in India or whatever. But if you're able to do this, you are, from our account, about 8,000 of you, seven to 8,000 Kenyans in Rwanda. We are happy to help you work with an insurance company to give you a good rate for you to be able to take out an insurance program. And that then is going to be able to meet all, for something like 5,000 shillings a year, you have one. You have, so you have a desk, you have a, an insurance scheme. You, you, personal one. So we are, we are happy to help uh, negotiate that for you with uh, like what uh, Cambodia, I think, the, your brothers in Botswana have done. It is not possible for GOK to carry the whole burden. We want diaspora to help carry that burden as well. But where things are really bad, we have intervened. And your embassy will tell, your high commission will tell you as much. Asante. Chairman, you may want to benchmark with Botswana. I was there with peers. That association of the diaspora in Botswana is something else. I was there with the PS and we had a night long engagement and they are doing very well. It's something you may want to benchmark. Your Excellency, Please. if you allow me, I will mm. say something on this. We've actually engaged about three underwriters. There's Britam, um, Kingdom Bank, and KCB. And some of these are, Your Excellency, it's very cheap. It starts from 2,000 Kenya shillings, about 2,600, all the way to 11,000. It gives a range of 50,000 to about uh, 500,000 for last expense. This is something we have been requesting our members to take advantage. We have connections, we have introduced you, we've given you the forms, but some of us just ignore until when they get into trouble, they call all and sundry for help. Sometimes we need to take personal responsibility for these things. 2,000, you cover 10 people in your family. The spouse, your spouse, four kids, and your mom and dad, and your father-in-law and mother-in-law. That right. program is already in place. Very and good. we have people who are registered. Asante. Thank you very much. Let's have two more questions. One lady. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Mary Maina. I, um, I, I am based in Rwanda, and I, I, um, I grew up from Rwanda, so basically I have nowhere to say like everybody else, like Nimetoka Kitale or something. But anyway, it's for the good. Uh, so I was raised in Rwanda, and, and right now I'm working. Um, I did my schooling and everything, and now right now I'm working in Rwanda. So my question, it is in the, uh, it's against that background, is there are many Kenyans like, uh, like me who didn't per se grow up from Kenya and grow up from across the borders, uh, but have a very huge challenge in terms of integrating with, the, with, with Kenyan culture, being in the diaspora space, and my question per se, it's more around, is, are there initiatives 
for uh, for Kenyans living abroad or young people living abroad who's be, who've been brought up from abroad to kind of have an awareness, cultural awareness kind of initiatives that can help us learn better how to um, inter learn more about our country. If we are to invest back, as it's been said, invest back home, it's about first learning about uh, a little bit more having more culture awareness. So my, my question is, are there any government initiatives that help young people living abroad interact better or understand better Kenyan awareness? And also, um, they had mentioned about global labor market strategy that helps Kenya, Kenyans get uh, jobs and opportunities across the borders. So my question again uh, is in line with the same. Is, it, is there any initiative of the same, but for Kenyans who, who are abroad, professionals like many, us, um, many of us are, initiatives that can bring us back to Kenya to bring our skills back to Kenya. Thank you very much. Thank you. P.S. Rosary. Thank you. Um, thank you for that question. Um, I'll start with the second one. The global labor market strategy really is in response to a very current problem that we have, which is a youth bulge and uh, underemployment and un unemployment. So our focus has been to help find opportunities for Kenyans already within Kenya to find opportunities abroad, not for Kenyans who are abroad, uh, probably already working to, to find other uh, opportunities. So that is the focus of the, of the strategy. That said, we are very interested in skills, knowledge, and technology transfer. And that is the reverse of the global labor market strategy, which is what are the things that you have learned out here and are looking to do back home. Some of, some of the fantastic ways of doing that is actually setting up a business back home that does the tax consulting or that does the, um, I think there was an HR consultant business outside that we saw, or that has figured out how do you make banana wine uh, if that is what you are doing in Uganda and are able to bring back home. So we are looking for those ideas and seeing how we can, um, we can plug into that. The IOM, for example, has a very specific, specific program for diasporians who want to return to their homes. But it's a limited program. Again, we are looking to address the current uh, issue that we have. And our big problem right now is unemployment and underemployment of young, young people. Um, initiatives uh, um, to bring about cultural awareness for second generation or young people to connect. Um, not much has been done about this as yet, but there are a lot of programs within the youth ministry um, and that we'll be happy to put, in, to put you in, in, touch, uh, in touch with, but also going forward, some of the focus for us in the 2024, 25, 25, 26 is connection with the young people and with the second and third generation diasporians. We'd be happy to have a conversation with you after this to see how we could together begin to structure that program. Asante. Thank you very much. Last question. Last one. Yes. Thank you. You are. Sasa to kijibu maswali yote tukija next time tutajibu nini? Waacha hii ya mwisho tutakuja tena. Thank you your excellency. I'm not happy that I'll be the last person to speak. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm actually from Rwanda. My names are John Gasangwa. I'm going to ask to do but uh, we leave. I've invested in the uh, hospitality industry in Mombasa, and I have a 60 rooms hotel in Tuapa. It's a daring experience, of course. As you know, the Kenyan economy is very competitive. Uh, the diaspora people you see here have also come to invest in Rwanda, many of them. And we are happy that you have created jobs in Rwanda. So I also daring to create jobs in Kenya. And uh, the hotel I have in Mombasa, we are employing 40 Kenyans who are paid regularly their salary. But what I wanted to say is that we would like to be treated equally, 
like Kenyan uh, businessmen. Mm. Like the hotel, which has been in place, I think, for the last 10 years, we don't have any tarmac road. I mean, from the Mombasa Malindi road, uh, joining us to the, the main road. We don't have running whole water uh, in the hotel. And we've been complaining. I'm happy I have seen my MP here, Mr. Mbaya. We've been writing and complaining. And no action. <laughs> and that no action has been taken so far. Okay. So I'm taking this opportunity, Mr. DP, to raise that question. Yeah. We don't want any favor, but in Rwanda, for example, any big investment coming here, you'll see the infrastructure coming to that investment. Thank you. And we would like to get the same treatment in Kenya. Thank Hassan. you very much. Before, uh